and welcome to NS News Live from Islamabad. I'm Hira Mustafa and these are the headlines. Taliban Supreme Leader Hebatullah Akhundzada says he favors a political settlement to the Afghan conflict in spite of military gains and advances. In a message, Akhundzada said Afghans should resolve their issues themselves instead of relying on foreigners. He said the Taliban are committed to forging a solution to end the war but slammed other sides for wasting time. His message comes as the latest round of talks between representatives of the Afghan government and the Taliban continues in Doha. The European Union has expressed concern over the Israeli aggression at the Al-Aqsa Mosque, calling for an urgent calming down of the situation. The bloc said acts of incitement must be avoided. This comes after illegal Israeli settlers and occupying Israeli forces broke into the Al-Aqsa Mosque and attacked Palestinian worshippers. In India, at least 30 people have died after several houses collapsed due to rain-triggered landslides in Mumbai. Rescuers said a number of people are fear-trapped in the rubble. The weather department has issued a red alert for Mumbai, saying more rains are expected in next four days. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan has urged the public to wear face masks, saying the threat of coronavirus is far from over. The country has so far recorded 22,781 deaths and nearly 990,000 infections. Meanwhile, the UK government says Prime Minister Boris Johnson will self-isolate after he came into contact with COVID-positive Health Secretary Sajid Javed. Globally, the virus has claimed more than 4 million lives and infected over 190 million people. Well, those were the headlines. See us in detail coming after the short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Now the news in detail. Taliban Supreme Leader Hebat Ullah Akhundzada says he favors a political settlement to the Afghan conflict in spite of military gains and advances. In a message ahead of Muslim religious festival of Eid al-Adha, Akhun Zada said Afghans should resolve their issues themselves instead of relying on foreigners. He said the Taliban are committed to forging a solution to end the war but slammed other sides for wasting time. His message comes after representatives of the Afghan government and Taliban sat down for a new round of talks in Doha. The much-awaited negotiations come amid a sweeping Taliban offensive in Afghanistan as foreign forces finalized their withdrawal. Today, the Taliban claim to have captured the Jakhansur district in Nimroz province, killing several Afghan soldiers. Meanwhile, Afghan troops said they have recaptured Parvan Surkh Parsa district and killed a number of Taliban fighters. The Defense Ministry said security forces killed over 100 Taliban in 13 provinces over the past 24 hours. The European Union has expressed concern over the Israeli aggressions at the Al-Aqsa Mosque. This comes after illegal Israeli settlers and occupying Israeli forces violated the sanctity of the mosque. Calling for an urgent calming down of the situation, the bloc said acts of incitement must be avoided. Earlier, the settlers and occupation forces broke into the courtyards of the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound and attacked Palestinian worshippers. Palestine's Ministry of Foreign Affairs urged the global community to take a decisive stance against the Israeli aggression. Hamas has condemned the Israeli raid, calling it an assault on the holy sites. Iran's foreign ministry insists that a prisoner swap deal has been agreed with the United States. Spokesperson Saeed Khatib Zadeh said Washington's denial is outrageous. All sides agreed to release 10 inmates. 
In a tweet, he said the talks with the U.S. and the U.K. on the issues were separate from JCPOA. Khatib Sadeh said Tehran is ready to proceed with the prisoner exchange today. Earlier, the U.S. accused Iran of an outrageous effort to deflect claim for the impasse in nuclear talks. The State Department said that Tehran's delay is restarting the process is not helping. China says it opposes any attempts of a regime change in Syria. The remarks come as Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Xi met with President Bashar al-Assad in Damascus. Wang said under Assad's leadership, Syria has made valuable achievements in combating terrorism and opposing external interference. The foreign minister noted that Assad's re-election reflects a strong trust and support of the Syrians. Wang added, blatant foreign interventions in Syria have failed in the past and will not succeed in the future. He reaffirmed China's support for the reconstruction of Syria and opposed unilateral sanctions against it. For his part, Assad said Syria supports China unconditionally on the issues related to Taiwan, Xinjiang and Hong Kong. He also expressed hope to take part in the joint BRI construction and strengthen cooperation in the fields of economy and science. The dead toll from freak floods in Western Europe has risen to 188. Hundreds of people are still missing as several areas are inaccessible to due to high water levels. German Chancellor Angela Merkel visited one of the areas worst affected by the rainfall and floods that have killed at least 157 people in the country. Merkel described the flooding as terrifying, saying Germany will have to do more in tackling the impact of climate change. Police said at least 31 people have lost their lives in Belgium, while the rescue services feared that the death toll could rise. The floods also prompted evacuations in the Netherlands, Switzerland and Luxembourg. Meanwhile, Austria is also on high alert as the country witnesses worst rainfall in last 30 years. In India, at least 30 people have died after several houses collapsed due to rain-triggered landslides in Mumbai. The National Disaster Response Force said a number of people are feared trapped in the rubble. Authorities said 24 people have been rescued from the areas. Officials said two others were injured in two different incidents in Chambur and Wickrawley areas. The weather department has issued a red alert for Mumbai in the backdrop of heavy rain. Several areas in the city are waterlogged after heavy rainfall and suburban train services are disrupted. In Thailand, thousands of protesters have clashed with the security forces as they marched towards Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ucha's office. They're calling for the Prime Minister's resignation over the handling of COVID-19 pandemic. Authorities used tear gas, water cannon and rubber bullets to disperse the crowd. The clash took place after some protesters tried to dismantle barbed wire and metal barricades blocking the roads to government house. Earlier, police urged people not to join the protest over the risk of further spreading of coronavirus. The protest marks one year since the first wave of large-scale street protest. The momentum of those protests told after authorities began cracking down on rallies and detaining protest leaders. The daily coronavirus deaths in Brazil have declined to 868 after a week of surging. New cases have also fallen from around 57,000 to more than 34,000 in the last 24 hours. The number of daily new infections has surged this past week to levels not seen since February. Mexico reported over 12,000 confirmed cases and 225 more fatalities, whereas Thailand has announced the expansion of coronavirus restrictions to three more provinces after the country reported a third consecutive day of record case numbers. Meanwhile, Tokyo Olympics organizers have reported three new infections among athletes, including two at the village. That compares with 15 new cases on Saturday, whereas the European Union says it has exceeded in the U.S. in vaccination. Globally, the virus has claimed over 4 million lives and infected more than 188 million people. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan has urged the public to wear face masks, saying the threat of coronavirus is far from over. The country has reported 21 more deaths from coronavirus and over 2,600 infections. It has so far recorded 22,781 deaths and nearly 990,000 infections. While the active cases have surpassed 47,000, with over 2,500 of them are critical. 
In the UK, self-isolating Prime Minister Boris Johnson has urged the public to be cautious against COVID-19 on eve of lifting pandemic curbs in England. Johnson isolated himself after coming in contact with Health Secretary Sachin Javed, who has tested positive for the virus. The 10 Downing Street initially said Johnson will not have to isolate as they were taking part in a pilot scheme that involves daily testing instead. A scheme which has been slammed by the opposition. This comes as almost all remaining restrictions in the country will be lifted on Monday despite a surge in infections. Earlier, government said every adult in the country has been offered a COVID vaccine ahead of restrictions easing. The government said around 88% of adults have had the first dose and 68% have had both. In France, thousands marched across the country to protest President Emmanuel Macron's plans of forced vaccination of health workers. They also protested the requirement of a COVID-19 free certificate to enter recreational places. Macron announced sweeping measures earlier this week to fight a rapid surge in coronavirus infections. Protesters say these measures infringe the freedom of choice of those who do not want the COVID shot. According to a poll, more than 60% of the people agree with mandatory vaccination and a health pass. So far, around 55% of the French have received a single dose of COVID-19 jab. Turkey has condemned a ruling by the EU Court of Justice allowing conditional headscarf ban as a clear violation of religious freedoms. In a statement, the Turkish Foreign Ministry said the ruling is a sign of rising Islamophobia in the West. It said the ruling comes at a time when Muslim women in Europe are being subjected to increasing discrimination for their faith. The Turkish presidency also condemned the move, labeling it an attempt to grant legitimacy to racism. Earlier, the European top court had ruled that companies in the bloc can ban employees from wearing a headscarf under certain conditions. Facebook has hit back after the Biden administration denounced it for spreading misinformation about COVID-19 vaccines. In a blog, Facebook Vice President Guy Rosen said the tech giant is not the reason the U.S. missed its vaccination goal. Rosen said President Joe Biden has chosen to blame a handful of American social media companies. He asserted that vaccine acceptance among Facebook users in the U.S. has increased. Rosen said company data shows 85% of Facebook users have either been vaccinated or want to be. This comes after Biden declared in unusually strong language that the platforms were killing people. Facebook's response follows a forceful condemnation of the company by Biden when asked on Friday. In the U.S., four people have been shot outside a professional baseball stadium in the District of Columbia. In a tweet, the police said no one sustained life-threatening injuries in the incident in Washington, D.C. It said an investigation is underway and it appears that there is no active threat. A match was in progress between the Washington Nationals and the San Diego Padres at the time of the shooting. The police said the game has been suspended. More news stories coming up after the short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Pope Francis has called for peace and dialogue in Cuba after nationwide protests rocked the communist-run party. Speaking after the Angelus prayer in the Vatican, in his first appearance since being discharged from hospital after surgery, the Pope said he is close to the people of Cuba in these difficult times, in particular to the families suffering the most. Last week, worst unrest seen in the country in decades with protesters in dozens of locations calling for freedom. On Saturday, pro-government forces along with President Miguel diaz Cano, took to the streets in Havana to support the regime. In western Kenya, at least 13 people have died after an oil tanker overturned and caught fire. Authorities say 11 others are wounded, including children. They said the crash happened as a driver tried to avoid a hit on collision with another lorry. Onlookers rushed to the scene to siphon oil when it exploded, engulfing those around in a fireball. Fire crews arrived at the scene two hours later to douse the flames. 
Three Chinese nationals and two Mauritanians have been kidnapped in southwestern Mali. The Malian army says gunmen attacked a construction site near Kavala town and took five vans. The army said the attackers also destroyed equipment, including a crane and dump trucks, trucks belonging to international firms. In a social media post, it said proceedings are underway against the Azalans. Kidnappings in the country are frequent, both of Malians and foreigners. On 8th of April, Sahel's largest jihadist alliance kidnapped French journalist Oliver Duvoy in northern Mali. Gunmen have abducted at least 60 people and killed one person in Nigeria's northwestern Zamfara state. Police said the abductors attacked five villages in the Shinkafi Re area. Witnesses said bandits escaped into the nearby forest after the kidnapping. They said the armed men riding on over 70 motorbikes also destroyed properties. They added the kidnappers fired a rocket that hit the house of a senior district official. Nigeria is battling an increase in armed robberies and kidnappings for ransom, mainly in the northwestern areas. In Spain, firefighters have used air tankers to control a wildfire in Costa Brava region. The blaze has forced over 300 people to evacuate their homes. The fire tore through about 1,000 acres of forest and scrubland on the edge of a popular tourist area, the Cap de Cruz Park. Authorities say the fire might have been caused by a discarded cigarette. They said anyone found responsible can face criminal charges. While well, Catalan Fire Service says six aircraft and 95 crews have been deployed. In the UK, Pakistan Air Force Pride JF-17 Thunder was a show stealer at the Royal International Air Tattoo. The Riyadh 2021 is being held virtually due to COVID restrictions. JF-17 dazzled spectators with breathtaking maneuvers and daring stunts while demonstrating the PF's capabilities. The Royal International Air Tattoo is the world's largest military air show held annually over the third weekend in July. Pakistan Air Force has been participating in the Riyadh since 2016. This year, PF jets are displaying their skills along with 70 other air forces of the world. As the annual Islamic festival of Eid al-Adha approaches, professional groomers in Pakistan spruce up camels to sell them at higher prices. More on this report. With a pair of sharp scissors, an aluminium plate, and a dining room chair, Pakistani camel groomer Ali Hassan snips away at his camel's hair, turning its back into a work of art. With Eid al-Adha just around the corner, he is a busy man. He does this work every year to show off his skills at the country's biggest cattle market in Karachi. I make these designs on camels because people find them beautiful when they look at them. They are good and attractive. When I make these designs with proficiency, everyone loves them. The 50-year-old learned the art of camel grooming from his father and has been doing it since he was a child. His services range from 31 to 63 US dollars, but could be even higher depending on the complexity of the design. The work, which is done on both sides of the camel, can take up to five hours to complete. All these patterns are easy to carve, but the most difficult part is the round shape or circle. Not every designer can draw it. You can bring any designer from this whole camel market here. He will not be able to place this design in a circle like I have done. Camels have remained an important part of life for people in Pakistan and India for centuries. They are still widely used in transport and farming in remote and arid areas. In China, the world's largest astronomy museum has made its debut to the public in Shanghai. The one of its kind museum will officially start embracing visitors on Sunday. It covers an area of around 58,600 square meters. The building is designed to highlight the orbital motion of the Sun and the Earth with three principal forms. Officials say the museum intends to create an immersive experience of engaging in a real astronom astronomical phenomenon. For instance, visitors can take a trip into a starry night in the Optical Planetarium Theatre. 
American pop star Britney Spears says she won't be performing again while her father retains control over her career. In a social media post, Spears said she will rather perform from her living room instead of on stage in Vegas. The singer said the situation she has been under for 13 years had killed her dreams. Her commands were the latest in her outcry against the conservatorship that controls her personal and financial affairs. Spears this week appointed a new lawyer to represent her in her bid to bring the conservatorship to an end, calling it abusive. She and her lawyer have yet to file a formal request to end the arrangement. The Cannes Film Festival has drawn to a close in southern France. The event managed to gather a large number of film stars despite the pandemic. More in this report. The world's biggest film festival returned to the French Riviera after a 2020 hiatus due to the coronavirus pandemic and one of the most unpredictable contests in years. To attain a widely imaginative film about a serial killer by French director Julia Ducournau won the top Palme d'Or prize at the Cannes Film Festival. Other big winners included Leos Carrex, picked as the best director for Annette, a musical about two artists caught in a twisted love affair. Hamaguchi Raisuki and Taka Musa, Oi of Japan, won the best screenplay for their tale of heartbreak and loss, Drive My Car. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Regarding the prize for best screenplay, first I need to thank the author of the source material, Haruki Murakami. Renee Reinsev won the best actress for her role in The Worst Person in the World by Joshim Tier, a modern-day romantic comedy that was a big hit with the critics. Caleb Landry Jones, who played the role of a mass murderer in an Australian film, Nitram, won the best actor and was speechless on stage. I think I'm going to throw up. I'm sorry. Uh, so thank you to the jury. <laughs> thank you, Justin. <laughs> I cannot do this. I'm so sorry. I, I cannot do this. Thank, thank you so much. The jury prize, another runner-up award for the best movie, went to two films. The Dov Lapid's searing look into artistic freedoms in Israel in Ahid's Knee, and a cryptic meditative drama Memoria by Thailand's Apicha Pong, Virese Takul. Italian director Marco Bello Show, 81, was given an honorary Palme d'Or. A young Chinese director Tang Yi, 32, won the Palme d'Or for best short film with all the crows in the world. Now it's time to take a short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. OPEC and its allies have agreed to boost oil supplies to the market, ending a two-week spat between Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. The dispute was resolved in a classic compromise after Riyadh met Abu Dhabi halfway in its demand for a more output limit, Saudi Energy Minister Prince Abdul Aziz bin Salman told media that a deal is an evidence of strong bonds between the OPEC members. Under the agreement, the cartel will boost production by 400,000 barrels a day each month from August. In a statement, OPEC said the deal will give several countries higher baselines against which their production cuts are measured. And for the weather updates, we have Nala Shuja with us. Thank you. So we're going to be starting off with Abu Dhabi, where it is extremely hot and sunny, with temperatures around 40 degrees Celsius. Now heading to Amsterdam, the sun will be partially out, with temperatures around 24 degrees Celsius. Ankara will also be experiencing some extreme weather at around 40 degrees Celsius, while Auckland has some nice winter weather at 18 degrees Celsius with some clouds. Now heading to Bangkok, the rain will get in the way of your plans, so make sure you have an umbrella on hand. Temperatures will rise to around 
32 degrees Celsius. Moving towards Beijing, the temperatures are around 27 degrees Celsius, but the rain might get in the way, so be careful. In Beirut, the temperatures will be around 31 degrees Celsius with some sunny weather in the way. Berlin will also be experiencing some sun with temperatures rising to 25 degrees Celsius. While in Cairo, the sun is out and is not here to play with temperatures rising to 38 degrees Celsius. While in Canberra, it has some partially pleasant sunny winter weather at around 12 degrees Celsius. While Islamabad, the temperature is around 37 degrees Celsius and sunny. And in Jakarta, the temperature is around 33 degrees Celsius with some cloudy weather. That's all we have for now. Back to you. Thank you, Nala. That's all for now. For the latest updates, you can follow us on social media at Indus.news.